there we go okay so <clears throat> as promised I'm going to be doing these uh, these videos just looking at each of the songs that I've made for my new album playing pretend and I'm just gonna give a little bit of commentary talk a little bit about the inspirations for each of them so I wanted to start with uh, this song green for green this was the first song that I ended up uh, writing and recording for this album. So this song, Green for Green, I came up with it a, only a few days into the pandemic, just after I'd stopped, you know, after we'd stopped coming to school physically. It just been announced that we were not going to be returning to school for quite a while, and so I had so much time on my hands, and I had this idea because at the start of the pandemic, I was very, I was thinking very wishfully, you know. So uh, what I mean by that is like. I was like, oh, me and my friends are still going to hang out all the time. Oh, no school? That means we get to hang out all the time and, and make fun stuff and actually have the free time to, like, do the shit we want to do, you know? And it turns out, no. No, that's not that's not how things are going to roll. So I came up with this. I, I wanted to write a song for someone who at the time was a friend and then a few weeks into the pandemic ended up becoming my girlfriend. Uh, her name is Mackenzie. She is a lovely girl. We uh, broke up about a little over a year ago. But I wanted to come up with a song for like for her for her birthday party, which was going to be a couple weeks into the pandemic. So I started coming up with this because of the fact that you know pandemic was around. I was just off of school for like you know for the foreseeable future, and uh, because of the fact that I wanted to get it done for for her for her party. So it had kind of like a deadline, and also all of this ended up giving me the motivation I needed to basically make a song in like two weeks. So I came up with this uh, and completely recorded it, edited it, everything in two weeks. And this whole song is actually just one take. And as I developed, I started kind of compartmentalizing things down a lot more, especially because I, I was having so many different voices and, and, and uh, sections and pieces to the, to the texture of the song that I couldn't, you know, do it all in one take. But this... Green for Green is all in one take. I recorded the whole thing in one take. I practiced the uh, music for about a couple of weeks, maybe maybe just a week and a half before I recorded. So let's go ahead and jump in. I'll start talking about what some of my musical inspirations were here. So right away, I want to talk a little bit about that first series of little phrases. That that part, I was I was inspired to create something that was kind of in the meter of three, or or potentially that could be six eight. But I want something that was in a very fast three that was kind of like swaying and rocking like a boat. You know, that's usually um, when composers use meters of, of three, uh, what are those called, triple meters? I don't know. I don't remember. When composers use meters of three, it's often because there's a desire to like give the groove of the piece a certain bouncing, rocking, back and forth kind of feel to it. So this one in particular, I was inspired by, by a very specific moment. I was inspired by a song by my all-time favorite band, Yes. I've been listening to their music for uh, six years now. So, the way Heart of the Sunrise starts out is like you can hear it's in three. Dun 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 dun. You know, it's in three. Um, but it starts out with this like heavy, and then it's all quiet for a little bit. You know, so it's uh, it's going back and forth dynamically. Um, but this isn't the part that inspired me. It's a good hook, but the part that inspired me comes later on. I think about probably here ish, right here. So that little I wanted to create something that sounded kind of like that. I wanted to have that kind of rocking, bouncing motion, but I wanted to have a little bit of vibrant, sort of zesty energy to it as well. So going back to the start of this piece, I'll compare. The thing that inspired me was this little phrase right here. And 
and what I came up with out of that was this. The big thing is, well, green for green is a lot slower. Uh, it's a lot, you know, less pretty. Because um, the, the touch that Rick Wakeman has on that piano in Heart of the Sunrise is, uh, is just gorgeous. Especially, so, I'm obsessed with Yes, completely. I know each of their albums pretty much in and out. And this album right here, Fragile, the way the piano sound throughout this album is very, very much a product of 1971 when the album was recorded and released. And so the sound of the piano is just this, it's this beautiful, almost antiquated old sound. It doesn't carry like a modern piano is supposed to sound. It's not heavy with the reverb. Uh, it's not a, it's not a, a, an extremely uh, mellow, uh, laid back kind of sound. It's, it's, it's a bit bright. Um, and so it suits the kind of like, it brings this energy to the piece. Uh, and then what I came up with, I was using completely different sounds. I wanted to have an electric keyboard and a synthesizer. And the reason why I wanted to have those, I'll get into that a little bit later. I just, I liked the balance of that. This is one of the first songs I made combining specifically synth with electric keyboard. Usually I would do like synth with organ or synth with synth. But this one I did synth with electric keyboard. <laughs> So the the hypermeter here, hypermeter is basically you have you know bars in music, and uh, generally speaking, you have you have a bar that's one two three four, and that's the, and that's your bar, and you're gonna have four of those, so it's one two three four, one two three four, one two three four, one two three four, and then that loops over and over and over. What I wanted here was to start out in three, and then have the last bar of each loop be specifically in four. So you get dun 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 one two three 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 four one two three one two three one two three one two and so on. So it's like something like what eight sets of threes and then a single four, something like that. Uh I I can't remember exactly. But I want something like that. And so that's the first bit. And it's going from dun 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 and then to suddenly you have this swap where the bass is now in the synthesizer, and the electric keyboard is playing the melody. So if you listen, at the beginning, the electric keyboard is the lower voice, and then suddenly it becomes the higher voice. And I'll show you what I mean by that. section end on that just kind of a last note and then go right back to the head essentially and uh so that section the groove there is just one two three 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 four it's a very it's a very standard rock and roll pop kind of groove um i've seen it all over the place i've heard it all over the place and i just want to come up with something like that but the chords there uh, this was, you know, this was before I really understood harmony, so I was just like, I just want these chords to kind of sound wacky, and, you know, they do, so, <laughs> no mission accomplished. And then this is a completely new section, and this is where I wanted to experiment with actually taking an improvised solo. And that little slow down right there, that's what we call, uh, not being very good. <laughs> That's what we call a, a sort of amateur quirk, um, which is the first of many I'm going to point out and kind of not berate myself for, but I'm gonna I'm gonna point out a lot of the amateur quirks and be like, oh, that's a little. Did you know that wasn't intentional? That's not that's not you know that's not clever. That's not anything. It's so so uh, right there that da, 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 it like it kind of works. Um, but it was a complete accident. One of the benefits of the way I've sort of changed my thinking and my approach to coming up with a lot of this music is when I would do things in just one take, if I were to take a solo, I wouldn't be thinking about form at all. I'd be like, okay, I'm just gonna stay on this chord for a little bit and then move on to the next chord. So I'm not thinking at all about how long are each of these sections and I haven't even bothered to count it, you know? So it's just a kind of all over the place solo, but I, 
feel like I did a pretty good job uh, with this solo for the time. This was a sort of big sort of step into understanding how to improvise in a melodic and uh, enjoyable way. And you can also hear, again, this was a, I mentioned in the announcement video, I started out by taking like this podcast microphone that I'm talking into right now and just putting in front of the speaker and playing, and this is exactly what it is. And so you can hear actually like little creaks from people walking upstairs or opening the doors. A lot of that kind of goes over the solo. And so the solo was very much so me, like I was playing while I was hoping, God, I hope this is a good take. I hope this is good enough for me to upload, for me to, you know, settle on. switching back and forth between all sorts of numbers you know I played you know the top chord one time I did it 10 times uh, where I did 10 on 10 on the top chord 10 on the bottom and then I went and did um, you know 12 on the top and then 11 on the bottom you know not even thinking really about uh, form or you know proper groove I just wanted to make a solo that sounded somewhat cohesive and I picked chords that were pretty easy to I picked power chords basically those fists in the bottom that the electric piano means it's very easy to solo over those because it's just two notes you know so I could basically integrate as much modal mixture as I wanted to so I was doing majors I was doing minors I was doing all sorts of things don't take that out of context please another thing that you probably notice is the synthesizer solo because I wasn't thinking about form or function or anything it goes on for a disproportionate amount of time because I was trying to develop it somewhere and build more tension. Because like, like right here, this is the start of a completely new idea in the solo. I added it in, um, let's, let's actually count that really quick. So where there should have been a three, there was a four. So there's like a little, you know, a little bar there that has an extra eighth note in it, which is fine. I feel like it does sound like an accident, but I'm also kind of proud of that moment because I recovered immediately and I just said, fuck it, I'll keep it. <laughs> you know, it's not a big deal. You know, it's just a little quirk. Here we get into a completely new section of the song. I landed, I landed on that wow. I landed on that note again, but instead of going back to the head, I brought in some completely new chords. So what's going on here is I just kind of had a couple of chord ideas that I was playing over that pedal note at the bottom, and I wanted it to sound dramatic, and so one of the things I did is each time I start that loop over, I 
bring in an upper extension, just one more, and so it's, it just sounds like the chords continue to build. And it's not that they're not, it's not that they're like tonally subversive. They're just uh, regular chords with, that happen to have you know regularly added extensions. Um, and I wanted it. One of the things I was really working on when I was practicing this is keeping that tempo and not speeding up, because that's one of those that like this is the part of the song, you know. There are songs, there are, there are songs, and there are parts of songs where they're supposed to be pretty fast, and if you slow down, it completely loses the tension. But this is like the opposite. This is like one of those songs that has to. This is this part of the song has to be taken pretty slow, and it can't speed up, or else it loses the uh, the tension. So that's something I really worked on. Uh, when I was practicing this. See, that's a little extension of the... Oh, and then again, it's a little... I bring that... that sus chord in there. That's a common tone. I bring in a new bass note to add a, like an extra beefiness to that chord. I really tried to make this part of the song breathe dynamically. It's quieting down. slowly. I tried to explore that space and then now it's coming up again and there's that melody. about with how the song turned out was coming up with that melody and figuring out how to sneak it into that ending section. Um, that melody, I'll show you what it's inspired by specifically, um, but it's it's just an augmented chord that then goes up to the major seven, then the um, the the minor seven above the roots, and then back to the the sharp five to make it augmented, and then it, it kind of goes down that are augmented. So it goes, uh, it goes down an augmented triad, and then up to the major seven, and down to the minor seven. So it's, it's a bizarre melody. But I was like, this just works so well, and so I kept it. And I'll show you what it's inspired by specifically. There's a specific melody in here that was just in my head, and I didn't realize it was in my head, but it was. <laughs> this right here. So that little melody right there. Down, 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 up, down, up, down, down. 
And keep in mind, it's still in three. It's still in three. One, two, three. One, two, three. It's it's obviously not the same intervals or the same notes, but it's the same shape. I, I, I ripped that shape off without even realizing it. That's, that shape is what I was ripping off there. Now in terms of why I picked out the instruments I picked out, I was particularly inspired by actually fusion, which you can tell I feel like because synthesizer over electric keyboard is a very fusion kind of sound. It's this Return to Forever song. I was just listening to this at the time. I was in um, the high school I went to. We were in a jazz band. We were playing uh, Spain. You know, Chick Corea and Return to Forever Spain, and I happened to then stumble upon more music by them. One of the songs was uh, this one, Medieval Overture. Basically, it was like, oh, I'm going to try that. I'm going to try synthesizer and keyboard. And so you can hear kind of like the wackiness and, the, and like the high pitched, like all the twinkling of it. Like already, already, I think you can tell that inspired like the beginning, you know? Especially the fact that it's going down a little bit. It's not quite the same whole tone movement, but... This right here sounds so much like arcade music, it's crazy. Because keep in mind, this was like a, what, a 1972 album. rest of it really has nothing to do with it but that kind of sound of the electric keyboard and the synthesizer I kind of took and used that in green for green so I would say those those three major songs heart of sunrise by yes medieval overture by return of forever and then buck beaks flight by John Williams uh, I would say those three songs are what were the biggest musical inspiration for this on, on one hand it's like you know, it's easy to kind of get a little bit of imposter syndrome when you realize, oh shoot, I just stole everything from somewhere else, but at the same time, I can't help but be so incredibly grateful that I had such close proximity to such great music, you know? Like John Williams, I was listening to his music since I was a kid with Star Wars and Harry Potter and, you know, Jurassic Park and all of these things. I don't know, I don't know if other people have a similar kind of experience, but so much of the music of John Williams I have ingrained in my head because of playing the Lego games, playing Lego Star Wars and Lego Harry Potter and Lego Indiana Jones. Like, that music is just in my head to the point where I almost think of it more as, oh, this is the aggro music in, in this specific Indiana Jones level, you know? That was the most genius thing those games did, is licensing John Williams' music. I feel like, honestly, I think that's one of the main reasons why a lot of the later Lego games stopped working as well is because they weren't they weren't so brilliantly scored, you know? You could always like you could always play those games and then get distracted by the you know, music of John Williams. And so I, I, I think that was a huge part of what put that music in my head. It was like part of it is like it really is just kind of close to my heart. And then of course yes is um like I said, my favorite band of all time. I'm I'm obsessed with them. And that that song <coughs> Heart of the Sunrise, I was listening to since, you know, 2017 when I uh, really dove balls deep into Yes to begin with. Uh, Return to Forever song, that really is just me, like, I suppose being grateful. The fact that I, like, am in a position where I can, you know, first of all, surf Spotify, that helps a lot. But as a, as a teenager, having, like, a jazz band at my high school that we could go and play real music in, you know, and, and build real connections, that was a that was a great thing. And I'm happy, I'm happy about all that, you know. And so on the one hand, it's like I feel like a little bit of an imposter because so much of this is borrowed. 
but on the other hand, I feel like it's just, you know, a reinterpretation and an homage. The title actually, so like I said, this is a song I wrote for my soon-to-be girlfriend at the time, and Green for Green came from, like, she sent a, a text to me that was, uh, she misspoke, basically, and she said Green for Green, I was like, ooh, Green for Green, I like that, I like that, I'm gonna use that. It's a, it's a dumb title. <laughs> But I feel like it's it's the it's the it's a productive kind of nonsense, you know. It suits the suits the song. That's that. Thank you all for watching my green for green commentary video.